Hello everybody and welcome to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to run code in sublime text. This is a question I get asked all of the time, so I figured I'd make a short, quick video and demonstrate how to do that. With that said, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so I'm here in sublime text. I have it open in front of me. And right now I just have a folder open with a very simple Python file. So I have import SYS and then I'm just printing out the version of the Python interpreter that's being used to run this code. And then I'm printing out hello. So that's the very basic setup for me, at least if you want to run some Python code. But for you guys, I'm sure many of you want to run other types of code. So don't worry, the stuff I'm going to show you in this video will apply to other languages as well. But I'm just going to do all of the demos using Python. All right. So how do we run code in sublime text? Well, in sublime text, we have something called a build system and we kind of perform a build and a build is just really executing your code. So the way you see all of this stuff is you can go to tools and you can see that we have build system and then we have build, we have build with, we have build results, save on all build. This is all of the stuff related to actually running your code. Anyways, go over build system and you'll see that you should have automatic checked. Now, if you don't have automatic checked, you should check that, but you can see all of the built in build systems that sublime text has. So if you're using any of these languages here and you have the correct interpreter or compiler already installed on your system and that's available on your system path, I'll describe what that is in a second. Then these build paths or build systems should just work. So, for example, if I go here to Python and I select this, I don't need to select it, but I'm just going to select it to show you. Now, the way that I would run my code is I would do control V on my keyboard or command V on your keyboard if you are on Mac, or you can press the F7 key and F7 will run your code. So we'll open up kind of the console here and you can see the output of your code tells you how long it took. Now, to close this window, you press escape. And again, to run this, it's control B or command B or F7 or function F7 if you're on Mac or Linux. That is how you run this code. Now, for some reason that doesn't work for you, there's a few different things you do to try to fix this. First of all, if you're using something like Python, when you install Python or if you reinstall Python, make sure you add this to your system path. Now, the system path, at least on Windows, can be accessed by going to your environment variables. So just type in environment variables or ENV in this case in the Windows search bar. It'll bring you to something that looks like this. And then what you can do is go to your path. You can press edit and you can add the direct path to where your interpreter, compiler, whatever it is may be. So in this case, you can see that I have Python 3.8, Python 3.8 in my path. So that means I'm actually able to type the command Python and run the Python executable. I'm not going to get too far into this, but that is the reason why for some of you this won't work because you don't have Python or whatever interpreter or compiler you're trying to use added to your system path. Now, if you don't have it added to your system path, don't worry, you don't need to add it. But to do that, you would press a new and then type in the actual path to where the executable file is. But if you don't want to do that, the way that you can fix this is by creating a new build system. So what you can do is go to tools here in sublime text and then you can go to build system and new build system. Now I'm going to show you how you make a new build system. So what I'm going to do is save this file. First of all, it will bring you to this kind of user directory. So you want to be in the user directory. Don't change the directory when you save this file and you want to call this file something, whatever the name of the build is dot sublime build. So in this case, I'm going to add a path for my Python 3.9 interpreter. So I'm going to say Python 3.9 good. And then this is dot sublime hyphen build. It's very important that you have this extension. If you don't have this extension, it's not going to show up as a potential build system. And then you can name this here whatever you want. So I just named it Python 3.9. Good. OK, so let me save this. And now I'm going to show you what we actually need to type in here to be able to execute some code. So what you want to do is have CMD right here. So this is your first kind of key inside of this JSON or dictionary or whatever you want to call it. And then what you want to do is the following. You want to have a list. You want to put the name of the command that you want to run. So in this case, I want to run Python. And then you want to put the file that you want to run this command on. Now, in this case, you're just going to do dollar sign file. This stands for run the current file. So right now what I've done is I've said, OK, when I run this build system right here in my terminal, I want to run Python space 
and then whatever the name of the file is. That's what this does. If you have multiple commands that you want to run, then you separate them by commas, right? And they'll be separated out on the same line. Hopefully that kind of makes sense, but that's what this build system will do. So I'm doing Python and then the name of the file. Now, in my case, this Python, the Python interpreter that I want to run is not added to my system path. And so Python like this is not going to work. What I actually need to do is give the direct path to where this Python interpreter is. So I'll show you. But if you go here, look, I'm on my C drive and notice I'm in a folder called Python 3.9. So Python 3.9 right here. And then what I have is, well, my Python interpreter, this Python right here. That's what I want to access. So what I'm going to do is copy this path. And then I'm going to go here. I'm going to change this to a forward slash. And then I'm going to put another forward slash between Python. So this is actually the executable file I want to run. It's in my C drive in the Python 3.9 folder. It's called Python. OK, and then I want to run the file. So this will separate this with a space and just run that. Now that we have that, the next thing that we need to add here is our selector. So we're going to say selector. And then this is going to be equal to, in my case, Python dot and then source or sorry, other way around. This will be source dot Python. Now, what this means is to automatically select this build path for anything that has Python code. That's kind of what the selector says. Now, what I will do is leave a link in the description to the documentation for how you create a new build system so you can read through it and see all of the specifics. But this is the basics here on how you would do something for a new Python build path. Anyways, now what I'm going to do is go back to test.py and show you that now that I've saved this, if I go to tools, I go to build system. I now have this Python 3.9 good as another build system that I can use. So now if I select that and I run this, notice I'm getting 3.9.7. Whereas previously, if I just go back here to automatic and I run this, I'm getting Python 3.8.3. So I'm changing what's being used to execute this Python code. So let's go back here and I'll select Python 3.9. Good. OK, so that's pretty much it for running code in Sublime Text. Now, the last thing I'll show you is how you cancel a build. So sometimes you have an infinite loop or you just want to exit the build at some point in time. There is actually a shortcut you can use to do that. Now, I'm not sure what the built in is because the built in shortcut I overrode, but I'll just show you how to override it and then how you can see what the shortcut is. So what we're going to do is go to preferences and then key bindings. OK, when we do this, it's going to open up this large thing like this. Now, if you go in here, you can see what all of the key bindings are and what they do. So you can kind of scroll through here and try to find what it is you're looking for. However, on the right hand side of the screen, we have any of our custom key bindings. So in this case, I have one custom key bind and this is control shift C. And what this does is cancel the build. So what you can do is add this in to your custom key map. OK. And then you can just make this whatever you want. So I've made this control shift C, but just keep this exact same format. So you want your open uh, curly brace, keys, colon, and then whatever the key is. Then you're going to have command and then cancel build. And this will cancel build. So in this case, it's control shift C for me. So that means if I want to cancel my build, let's just do a infinite loop here. So let's go while true uh, print test. Okay, I'm going to run this. So now if I want to cancel this, control shift C and notice it cancels my build. OK, so that is pretty much all I had to show you. I apologize if this doesn't necessarily work for all of the languages that you were looking for, but hopefully this at least gave you kind of a little bit of a head start into how you can run some code. Again, the trickiest thing here is going to be creating this file. If you need one, you just need to actually figure out the path to the interpreter or compiler you want to use, and then you're going to have to choose the right selector. I'm not sure what all of the selectors are off the top of my head. That's why I will leave the documentation in the description. All right. So with that said, I am going to end the video here. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in another YouTube video.